In this video, we're going to take a look into how we can record audio in Cakewalk by BandLab and also introduce a lot of the concepts surrounding the process of recording that a beginner is likely to not know. Now, we will not be using any external sound card or interface in this video because of two reasons. One, beginners will not probably have such devices and two, I don't have any device like that either. If you are also using the onboard sound, then you might have to go to the sound settings of Windows and make sure all of the settings are as they should be. For example, here in the input section, make sure that the microphone that you're connecting is one of the input devices. Now the most important setting that we have to look into is inside device properties and additional device properties. Here inside the advanced tab, we can see the format in which the sound will be recorded. And we have this two channels, 24-bit, 44,100 hertz selected. Now this is a pretty standard format while we are dealing with the song. In Cakewalk, we have the exact same thing here, 44.1 kilohertz and 24-bit depth. If this is not the exact same as this format here, it might cause some errors. We can fix that by clicking here. This brings up the relevant section in the preferences where we can see the sampling rate. Now if you don't see 44.1 kHz here, then this is where you can change it. Then under file, we have audio data where we can see the bit depth also. We have it already set to 24. If you need to change it, change both of these. And then you might need to restart Cakewalk to see the audio configuration changes here. Once that's done, we can go to playback and recording and select whichever driver that we want to use. For people using onboard sound, the folks at BandLab suggest using Wasapi drivers. Now I'm gonna use Wasapi Shared because that's the driver that lets me record my system audio. And once you have the driver mode selected, we can go to devices and make sure that the input device that we set in the window settings will be here and we can enable it. Okay. Now we are going to right click in this track pane here and then select insert audio track. Then we are going to expand it to see the inputs. Now if you don't see this, then make sure you have I.O. selected here. Now we can click on inputs and then select the microphone that we already set up. Here we can see three different options of the same microphone. One for left, one for right and one for stereo. Since microphone is a single source, we don't need stereo which is dual channels. Either left or right will work. And I'm gonna just select the first one. In order to record into a track, we need to arm the track for recording by clicking this button here. Now you can see the peak meter reacting to my voice. Which leads to one of the most important topics of audio recording and that is adjusting the input level. It should not go above this 0 dB value here. If I click it, it's going to update it. Now we can see this level in another place which is much more convenient for me. And that is this inspector here inside the track. I don't want to see this track so I'm going to do click and make it like this. Now the value down here is the same as the value that we were seeing here, which is the peak meter value and it should not exceed about 0 dB. If it does, clipping will occur and it is something very undesirable in audio recording. And it will also be indicated by a red indicator on top of both these peak meters. At the same time, the input signal level should not be too low that we might end up losing the dynamic range in the audio signal. Since I'm using the onboard sound of Windows, I can set it by going into the sound settings of Windows and control the volume here. Or go into additional device properties to further boost the microphone. If you have a sound card, controlling the input level will depend on that specific hardware. Once we have the input audio level set and a track armed for recording, we can place the playhead from where we want to record and then just start recording. If you want to keep yourself in time, then you can enable this switch here which will play the metronome while you're recording. And then we can just hit this record button here, which is going to record whatever voice is coming through the microphone set as the input here in this track. Alright, here we have the recording which is going to record whatever voice is coming through the microphone set as the input here in this track. Alright? Now when we are recording into an actual project, we will probably have to use a pair of headphones to listen to whatever is already inside the project so that we can sing along or play an instrument along with it. Now when we do that, we will not be able to listen to what we are trying to record because of the headphone isolation. In such a case, we can enable this input echo by which we can hear what's being captured by the microphone through our headphones. 
Now you might have already noticed that my sound is being heard as two different sounds. This happens because of latency, which is the time difference from the moment a signal is fed into the system to the moment it appears at the output. Too much of latency can cause confusion because we are not hearing what we are trying to record. Not only that, what we record will also lag by a little bit in the project and we will have to drag that clip to the left a little bit to make it in time. There are a few methods by which we can reduce the latency, the first of which is to change the driver mode. To do that, we open up the preferences and then go to playback and recording. And then here in the driver mode, we can choose a suitable driver. Now, as I said before, the folks at BandLab recommends using Wasapi drivers. Among Wasapi Shared and Wasapi Exclusive, Wasapi Exclusive is the one with lower latency. But personally, I found the ASIO driver to have the least latency. That is, it's almost nil. Like, I can hear whatever I am trying to record almost instantaneously through my headphones. This ACO for all driver is free to download and install and you can find the link to it in the description of this video. But before you go there, I would like to mention that there are some techie people who have said that it is not exactly a better option to use ACO for all because it was actually written for the older version of Windows. So I'm gonna choose Wasapi exclusive. Now another thing that we can do is go into the driver settings and change the buffer size here. If we pull it to the left, we can reduce the latency as you can see here. But at the same time, we are putting a lot of load on our CPU that there's gonna be crackling or popping sounds or even audio engine dropouts when we are trying to record. These things can even occur when we are trying to play back the project without recording. So we have to find a sweet spot where we can balance latency and a smooth playback. So around this value is kind of okay for my particular hardware. In some driver modes, this setting will not be available here, like in case of ASIO. ASIO has an external panel outside of Cakewalk, which you can mostly bring up by clicking on this box here. Okay. Another thing that we can do is to disable the effects in all these tracks, which in turn will free up some system memory. I'm gonna hide the inspector and then bring up the console view. And here we can see all the effects in here. Here is the effects rack and here is the pro channel effects bypass switch. Instead of disabling the effects by these individual switches, we can do this in one single place. For that we can use one module in the control bar which is not available at the moment because we are using this basic workspace. If we change it to advanced, we will get a lot many options here. But for now, to avoid confusion, let's only bring the module that we actually need at the moment. So we are going to right click here and then go to modules and then click this mix here. So here we have the mix module and we can use this effects switch to bypass all the effects. And if we click that switch again, all the effects that were disabled by clicking here in the first place can be turned back on. But in some cases, we might actually need the effects plugins in a track to remain enabled because it's part of the sound itself. In such cases, we can try freezing the track. For instance, let's consider this track which we recorded in the last video. And if I switch here to effects, you can see that I have added an effects plugin called Origin from Cymatics. Now if I click on this star kind of switch, the content in the track gets converted into the processed audio clip that we are supposed to hear after the audio signal goes through all the effects plugins. So now all the effects plugins including the effects modules in the pro channel and the instrument plugin that is generating the sound are all taken away from the system memory releasing the CPU. If in case we want to edit this again, we will have to unfreeze that track. Another thing that we can do is archiving the track instead of muting the track. When we are muting a track, all the plugins in the track are still being processed so that when we unmute the track during playback, we still get to hear the audio of that track. But when we archive a track, it still mutes the track, but this time, everything belonging to that track is taken out of memory. And for the same reason, we cannot unarchive a track during playback. By doing all these, we should be able to get the latency to something that's quite negligible. Now I'm gonna prepare this project for recording some guitar parts. If you have seen the episode 6 of this Cakewalk tutorial series, you will know that we made this project in D sharp minor scale. Now I'm not familiar with the D sharp minor scale in guitar, but I am familiar with the E minor scale which is the next key with respect to D sharp. So now what I'm gonna do is select all of these 
except the drums, then click on process and then click transpose. To go from D sharp minor to E minor, we have to change the amount to plus one, then press OK. Now the project is in E minor. Now I'm gonna select all of this and duplicate it. And then freeze only these three tracks because this track is already archived and the Citella plugin does not actually take much memory. To freeze the selected tracks with one click, we hold down control and click on the freeze button on one of those tracks. It is imperative that we do this before bypassing the effects. Otherwise, the effects will not be applied on the bounced frozen tracks. Now we can bypass the effects. Now we are ready to record the guitar part into this project. So now let's set up the guitar. I've got this electric guitar with this cable which I can connect to the laptop by making use of this connector. So whenever I connect an audio device through that port, I'll get this window which makes it possible to configure that single audio port I have in my laptop. Since we are connecting an electric guitar directly, it should be a line-in port. Okay. We are getting this because Cakewalk has identified Linen as a new device. So the question is, do you want Cakewalk to add this device now? Yes. And now if we go to the preferences, we can see that Linen is here and in I.O. it is already set to Linen. Again, this is a single audio channel input, so we can choose either left or right. I'm just selecting the first option. So now if I enable the input echo, As you might have already noticed that the volume level is not adequate enough. But I actually don't know how to increase the level when we are using the Wasapi exclusive. But since we have the least latency, I'm gonna go with that driver and this level of audio. So now let's record. Arm the track and hit R on the keyboard. As you can see, the audio level of this clip is pretty low. So I'm going to select that clip and then go to process and then apply effect and then click normalize. And then I'm going to change this normalize level to something around minus 2 dB and click on OK. Now what this does is it brings up the audio level such that the highest peak in the audio clip will be at minus 2 dB. Now when we are handling audio clips like these, it will be better to go into view and then go to display, then vertical grid lines and change it to in front of clips so that we can see those lines. Now I'm going to show you something pretty interesting. If you were not able to play anything on right time, then you can click this edit filter and then select audio transients. Now this is going to show us the transients with these straight vertical lines, which we can click and change like that and we can make them to be on time with these grid lines. And if we double click now, when we have that icon by the side of the mouse, we'll get this window where we can quantize this audio. We can select the resolution here, 1 by 16 is pretty good. And then if we click OK, all those straight lines will be snapped onto the resolution that we set in the quantize window. But I don't want to quantize this audio because it will lose the human element in it when we make it too perfect. So I'm just going to undo that and change this edit filter back to clips. Now let's take a look into one of the modes of recording called comping. It refers to the process of recording multiple takes, then assembling a final composite track by combining the best parts from each take. You'll understand that after I demonstrate it. To set the recording mode to comping, we have to long press on the record button and then click on comping. Now, we have already taken a look at all these other modes in the previous video. So if you do want to understand these, check the previous video in this tutorial series. So now back to comping. I'm gonna select it. And now if I record, For a demo, this should be enough. Now let me normalize the newly recorded audio. Now if we click here on this switch, we can see the two different take lanes. 
T1 is the first recording and T2 is the new recording. At the moment, the tool that we are using is the smart tool. But if you want to go specifically on comping, we can right click on this edit and choose comping. However, the smart tool can do almost everything and so I'm just going to use the smart tool. Now when we have that selected, if we hover over the lower side of one of the clips and then click and drag, that's what's going to be on the top main track. So this is how we can compose the best performances from different recording takes. Now instead of manually recording each takes differently by hitting record and stop multiple number of times, we can loop the recording. To do that, we select the region that we want to record and then hit shift plus L, which is going to loop that region. And now if we record, Now let's get rid of this last take lane because nothing is recorded in it. So here we have the three take lanes in which we have something actually recorded. I'm going to select all of these new clips and then normalize them. Now from these takes, we can pick the one that sounds the most right. And just like that, we can compose it the best portions of the different takes into one single clip. You know what, I was quite happy with this take except for this last part here. And once that's done, we can right click here and then click on flatten comp. Which is going to combine all the selected clips in the take lanes into one single clip in a new take lane. And then mutes all the other take lanes. Now let's take a look into punch recording. Let's say this single portion here didn't came out right in any of these takes. We can record only that specific region. But let's just say it will not come in the right way if we do not play the region before it. So then we are going to select the region that we want to record. If we disable the snap, we can be more precise with the recording that more precise with the region because it will not snap to the grid lines. And then to enable punch recording, we need one additional module with this control bar. So we are going to right click here and then go to modules and then enable punch. So here we have the punch recording. We have selected the area here. So now all we have to do is click on this button and the area of recording will be shown. Now see what happens when we hit record. As you can see, the recording was only done in the selected area. And that's it. Stick around till the end of this video to hear how it sounds straight from the system out. So I'm gonna do a little bit of mixing and adding effects. I'll be back in a moment. So here is the guitar portion that we recorded and this is how it sounds like without any effects. Now with the effects turned on, I also ended up adding this guitar portion. Now with the effects turned on. So there we have it. Now here is the whole project. Leave a like if you found this video useful. So in the previous video we saw how we can record MIDI and in this video we saw how we can record audio. There is one more type of recording and that is automation recording. However, we call it automation writing and that is one of the topics that we will be covering in the next video in which we will be looking into automation in Cakewalk. And with that this is ADK and I will catch you in the next video.